guys, they worked so hard. How many months we've been working on this now? Six or a month. Yeah. yeah, and it hasn't been easy. It's been overtime work, a lot of really tough details. You see, the magic of what's here is that it's web first, it's light first, it's written in TypeScript, there's a lot of amazing code, but it's agile. So what's so beautiful is we've been able to marry the, 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 the formal methods and the, and the really rigorous stuff that's been done by the Cardano infrastructure engineers with a web approach where we can get features out every six to nine weeks. So when you look at Lace, it evolves over time. You go on vacation, you come back, there's a new feature. You wait a little bit, there's a new feature. Menus are changing, customization is changing. And the thing is, because it's built up web foundations, a lot of things are very easy to do. You know, for example, a dark mode, fonts, you ask for these usability things, well, we don't have to invent that. That just comes for free as a result of the hard work of millions of developers throughout the world. The other thing is, when you look at the NFT store, this is a foundation that we can work with partners like JPEG Store and CNFT and many others and ourselves and our projects, and we're going to be able to add more over time improve the experience over time, work on standards over time. When you look at the DAP store, the magic of the DAP store that really gets us excited is the fact that we can now visually represent the things that are certified and safe from the things that aren't. There's this question about curation. How do you curate a DAP ecosystem? Right now how it works is you have Apple and Google and these other people, and they decide who's legitimate and who's not legitimate. Is that decentralized? Is that crypto? No. So you want to marry two things, the desire for safety with the desire for openness. And right now they're at odds with each other. The safer you are, the more closed and curated you are. The more open you are, the more dangerous it is because the higher the chance of a scam, an impersonation, a fake debt was worth, a fake app, fake something. We've all seen it. The power of a model like this is first, this is just amazing work for me and, and others. I, how many months? Yeah, you worked for like a year on this. This, this Yeah, this is, this is incredible. The double diamond design method. They work with people in the community. So this is not the first time a lot of the community members have seen this. Hundreds of interviews, lots of hours were put in. But it's great for DAP discovery. But also, there's tons of visual cues when you guys see this launch that will differentiate something that is certified from something that's not. So here's the compromise for openness versus security. For openness, anybody can register a DAP on Cardano. Stop, that's it, anyone can do it. They don't ask to have for permission, just like a delegation, uh, like a state pool register, you don't have to ask for permission, you can just do it. But if you go through certification, through an open process, you'll be visualized differently in the store, which means you have an economic and community incentive to do things the right way, the secure way, to check your work, to have third parties review things. So we're both open and secure in that respect. Everybody can be in, but the people who do their homework, they get to sit at the front of the class. I think that's a beautiful compromise when you're doing. Staking, when we click here, it's a very uh, basic view. But what's so cool is that innovations are coming to lace rapidly, like partial delegation of proxy keys. It took a very long time for these things to come out. But what that's going to translate to is that this view is going to dramatically change and it's going to be a lot easier for people to delegate to multiple pools. It's going to be a lot easier for people to have proxy keys where they can separate the hot keys from the cold keys. So when you connect your ledger or your Trezor or any other hardware or a paper wallet, that can stay safe and secure, but you can manage everything in the interface here. And that's a seamless process in that respect. And again, this is part of that six to nine week delivery cycle. So you release an MVP, we learn together, we grow together, you wake up and suddenly the feature's just there. Right, right? That's how products should be built. Then you get to really innovate. So we have great technology called Mithril. Whole blockchains are being built to try to replicate one paper of the 140 of Cardano's. So when you look at things like Mina Protocol, you look at things like Cello, they write these, all this cryptography, and they talk about a constant size blockchain, heavyweight snarks, all these things. You get that with Mithril. You get full node security with a light wallet. The state pool operators can construct these Mithril certificates. They go along with the transactions, and when you validate, it's the same level of security that if you had a full node. 
But do you have a full note? No! It's a browser wallet! It works on your phone! How about that? Isn't that cool? And, and that's, that's what's so cool about innovation. When you do things right, and you build on brand, and you walk your way up the ladder, then you live in a world where you get a lot of amazing stuff downstream. Mithril is really hard to do on a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. It's really easy to do on a cryptocurrency like Cardano because we designed Cardano for this. And it's being used everywhere. We just released a video yesterday. Agalos Cassis was talking about input endorsers, the future of scaling for the layer one of Cardano. Mithril is an integral component, as is the extended UTXO. You saw in the demo that he just did a transaction where he sent a bunch of value and a bunch of NFTs all together. You can just do that with extended QTXO. It's one transaction. You hear all these people in the space say, how many TPS are you? Does it really matter when you can do a thousand things in one transaction? We have a definitional problem here, right? The space hasn't caught up with that because they think, oh, it, it has to be like Ethereum. That's not the Cardano way. You start from first principles, you build evidence, you work your way up brick by brick, block by block, and eventually you get to do fun shit. And this is fun. It was hard to build Daedalus. It was necessary, but it was hard. And now we get to enjoy the fruits of our labors as a project. And what's so cool is we get to work with all of you about it. The double diamond design process, the customer feedback, the interviews, none of these things are ever going to stop. Every week, every month, somebody's going to come talk to Alex, talk to Ian, talk to the team, and you're going to come and say, I really want this feature. And you say, okay, that's a good idea. A lot of the features in here came from the community. I think Fitship 30 was a community in SIP, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And so there's things that we learned from you guys. And we said, that's a good idea. Let's put it in. How we visualize and present NFTs. That's going to come probably 90% from the NFT community on Cardano. They're going to write standards. They're going to write SIPs. And we're going to say, that's a really good idea. Let's support that. The final point along that line is people ask me, what is the official wallet of Cardano? I don't know. You see, there's Deadless, there's your Roy, there's Nami, now there's Lace. Another part of the initiative of constructing Lace is we've been in deep and detailed conversations about certified wallets. That's software done right. So the point of certification is that you agree as a community on standards about usability, support, uh, certain features, uh, safety, uh, things like key management, and so forth. And then as long as you adhere to those standards, you can certify your wallet against it. So we gotta stop thinking of official versus unofficial, and we have to start thinking of certified versus uncertified for our dApps and for our wallets. Because a certified wallet, what that basically means is that people have shown evidence that the wallet doesn't have security flaws. People have shown evidence that the wallet adheres to proper functionality. Like for example, what if there are bugs in the way that you send and receive ADA? You can end up having a situation where your wallet destroys money or sends it to the wrong people. So you probably want to get a proof that that can't happen, right? Well, it took us a year and a half to write a whole model and think really carefully about it. We have a formal specification for it. So anyone building a wallet should probably use a library that follows that methodology. So you, the consumer, get safety and guarantee. That's simple. So certification is a project that we hope the CF can lead will follow and support, and others will follow and support. And basically, they'll put us in a position where we as a community can define what's good for everybody, and then Lace will be one of the first wallets to get certified. And all the other wallets we go to get certified, and everybody else gets to make a decision. And just like the DAP store, does it mean you can't have a wallet? No. But it's another piece of information, and it's what allows us to lead in this industry. There's many firsts with Cardano. We were first to market with a provably secure proof of state protocol, both in paper and in location. We were first to market with the extended UTXL model, the way that we designed it. Ergo did some very good work and it's very close and similar. We were first to market with a uh, current computer programming thing. We were the first to market with native assets. Bitcoin have been trying to do that since 2012 with color coins. We were the first to actually make that work well. Now there's over 5 million assets issued on Cardano, not by me, but by you. And many of the people who issued those are here today. Isn't that cool? 
We were first to market with one of the largest decentralized organizations, Catalyst, 55,000 registered voters, million plus votes. How many people here have used Catalyst? Show of hands. Exactly. Isn't that magical? And a lot of things came from Catalyst. Nami Wallet came from Catalyst. You know, how many people got funding from Catalyst? Show of hands. There you go. And the cool thing is, the voting center is going to bring it to the next level. Because right now, less than 10% of the people who will aid and participate on a regular basis in governance. When we have a beautiful, seamless voting experience, that'll be just like staking, we're over 72% stake. So can you imagine how powerful, big, resilient, robust of an ecosystem we will be together when we have seven times as many people participating in the democratic process, submitting ballots? How many projects are going to come from? How big the crowds are going to be? What's going to come from that? And the cool part is because this is being built in collaboration with you, can you imagine how fast this product is going to develop? It's open source. Can you imagine all the standards the community is going to have? This is why this is one of the most exciting products, I think. It's really the Lebowski of products. You know, the rug that ties the room together. This really ties Cardano together and IO together. And it's also going to be multi coin so it'll have Cardano. In the future, we'll support other tokens as well, above and beyond just the native assets of Cardano. Because Ethereum has gas, others have gas, so we can bring everybody together into one family, a true liquidity there. And then this is also going to have an identity center inside of it. So you, anybody use a Tala Prism? You know about a Tala Prism? We keep talking about the millions of people that use a Tala Prism. Well, wouldn't it be cool to have a way to marry identity and value together and manage it with the same interface so suddenly it could be your passwords suddenly it could be access control suddenly it could be compliance and regulation the future we're moving towards with lakes is if you want to create a coinbase account you just click one button if you have a did and it's pre-created you're already gone through compliance no friction in commerce as you move between one experience to another experience to another experience multiple dids for multiple things your alias for gaming, nobody knows who you are, the thing you use for regulated activities, the thing you use with your doctor, the thing you use with your family, different personas, different profiles. That's the other cool part about marrying these two things together, is that it, once they fit together, it's like peanut butter and jelly. You never go back. That's identity. And that's coming here. But do we just get to use it with Lace? No! The DAP developers, the NFT makers, all of these other people, they get to use it too. Because every Lace customer, every person using this framework is going to expose and provide that to the DAPs that they choose to interact with. So it means you as a DAP developer get a much richer interaction with the people that you work with. When PubSub comes to Cardano in the coming months and years, when you Download a DAP, when you uh, delegate to a state board, you can subscribe to them. They can push information to you. You can see things, you can hear things. Oh, you have a pending signature. I'm a charity state board. Here's my uh, report for the quarter about how much clean drinking water we got. These types of things. People vote. Well, I need a verified user. Well, if you have identity, you have a verified user. You can send NFTs to your users for people who have done special things. You give special rights with NFTs. Talk about musicians. We talk about people who are artists, these types of things. The bread and butter is your relationship with your fans. That's why we built Lace. It's a platform to bring people together, their identity together, their information together, their value together, and put you in the driver's seat about this new economy, this Web3 economy. Put you in control of that and decide how you want to navigate it. Our expertise is in infrastructure and cryptography, so over time we can add more crypto that translate to more security, more options, more capabilities. And with you, we're going to develop the expertise of user experience and user interface, which we traditionally haven't been in this yet. And by listening, learning, and assisting together, we're going to get it done. So thank you all for coming here, Alex. Thank you for all the hard work you put in. It means the world to all of us. I'm proud of this. I've been wanting this product for a very, very long time. Uh, and it's good to see it come out it will come out in the summer, and as I said, uh, it's uh, just the beginning of a long journey. Thank you, everyone. Woo!